James chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. Would you read that with me? James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Thank you so much. Catch somebody by the hand and look at them and say, neighbor, we need an attitude adjustment. Thank you. An attitude adjustment. Say that again. An attitude adjustment. Thank you. I want to take these words in this text and go deep enough to deal with the original language and then I would bring it back up to our English language and help us understand it. I don't want to get too deep, but I don't want to be too shallow either. It opened with the pensament of the text telling us who he is. He give us his name. His name is James. He says that if though he is the only James in the Bible, he does not put any handle on his name. He just says James. Doing research in the Bible, there were at least three other James and there was one that was called James the less which was one of the original disciples and the Lord just mentioned his name and what you might call chronological order he says nothing about him give us nothing to do with his parents where he came from his background when he f when he met the Lord, he just says, James. Then there's another James that you are familiar with. He is the brother of John. Uh, his mother's name was Salome. His father's name was Zebedee. He was also one of the twelve uh, that followed Jesus. But he ran into Hera and lost his head one Easter Sunday morning. But then there was another James that was the brother of Jesus. When you see Jesus' biological family, Jesus had four half-brothers and had some sisters, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon were the brothers of Jesus. But when you look at that James, on the surface there are questions about him because when Jesus was alive, he did not have any support from his siblings. In other words, his sisters nor his brothers thought enough of him to follow him. His mother followed him, but not his siblings. They actually thought that Jesus was a little off. Uh, they believed that his lights was on, but nobody was home. If you allowed them to tell it, they would say his elevator didn't go all the way to the top. 
uh, in the language of our modern day children and young teenagers, they would say he was mentally challenged. Uh, to the extent that one day they came where Jesus was teaching and they sent an usher in to go in and tell Jesus his mother and brothers are outside, they would like to see him. And when Jesus received the message, he asked, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And then he answered his own question by saying, my mother and brothers are the ones that do the will of my father. They said, uh-huh, we know he's a little off. If you notice, you never saw any of them around Jesus doing all of his miracle working, all of his teaching. They were never there. That was what you call self-imposed ignorance. That when teaching is going on and you don't show up, that's self-imposed ignorance. But the Lord saw the need of reaching the biological family of Jesus for in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 7, after Jesus had made a pit stop or personal appearance to several people, Mary, we call her Mary Magdalene, her name was Mary. She came from a town called Magdalene and we called her Mary Magdalene. After he appeared to Mary, after he appeared to 10 disciples uh, on the lake of Tiberia, after he appeared to seven more disciples and after he appeared to 500 brothers at once he went back and made a public appearance to James the brother of Jesus it was then that the brother of Jesus decided that he was going to be a part of the family of Jesus Christ it's it's believed that this is the James that penned this text he is actually the brother of Jesus. James is so minute in his instructions until he does not say Apostle James, Prophet James, Bishop James, Archbishop James. He doesn't put a handle at all. He just said James. And of course, when you know who you are and know whose you are, you don't have to have titles to be identified. And so he merely said, James, and then he tell us who he was. He said, I am a servant. And the Greek word for servant is the word doulos in the Greek. It, word, it come from the word meaning not just a slave, but a bond slave. A bond slave is different from a regular slave. A bond slave had the privilege every seven years to be set free. Master, you have been kind to me. You have blessed my home and my family. And I want to be your willing slave. And so the master then would get an ice pick and put a hole in his ear and place an earring that's found in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 17. He would place an earring in his ear and release him. And everywhere he would go, when one spotted the earring, they knew that he had been a slave. He chose to remain a willing slave the rest of his life. Now, I don't know why you wear earrings, but it came from the Bible, from a person being a slave, and he chose not to be set free. It's a James, a servant, and then he tell who he belonged to. He said, I am a servant of God. Now, as say what you will of me, we are slaves either of Satan or the Savior. That whether you like it or not, we are slaves. We were born slaves, born in sin, born in iniquity, but because of who we belong to, we've had the privilege of being set free. <laughs> Am I here by myself? He is a slave a, of God. Theos is the Greek word for God. Elohim is the Hebrew word for God. Now, God, that is not his name. That's just who he is. His name is Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Salon, Jehovah Sitkanu. 
That is his name, but you can call him God. If you can't remember none of the other names, you can say, hey God. And God will respond to your request. He said, I am a servant of God and of the Lord, Kurios, Jesus, Eesus, Christ, Christos. Now, if you notice, he places all three of his names in James chapter 1. Many places, when you read about Jesus, you will read the text, and Jesus spoke. Or in some places, you would read where it said, Thou art the Christ. But in some places, you would read where it said, The Lord. But here he places all three of his names together, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you know, sometimes when you buy something or you make an agreement, they will tell you to put your first, middle initial, and sign your last name. Some documentation, they tell you, sign your first name, put your middle initial, and then sign your last name. But some documentations, they're so important until they tell you, sign your whole name. And what James is saying that this matter of adjustment, attitude adjustment is so important in the sight of God until Jesus uses his whole name. He uses Lord because Lord is his divine name. Jesus is his human name. Christ is his holy office. Am I here by myself? It said Lord Jesus Christ and then it said who he is writing to to the 12 tribes which are scattered. Now, 12 tribes of Israel came actually from the 12 sons of Jacob. And they were named, Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel after Jacob had messed up. You see, the name Jacob stand for trickster, but the name Israel stand for God will deliver. Somebody here need to know that God will deliver. He is a delivering God. Isn't it good to know that God will change your name? He will change your name from sinner to saint. <laughs> he will change your name from doubter to faith. He will change you from darkness to the marvelous light. God can and will change your name. Israel were the 12 tribes, but what happened was 10 tribes split out from two tribes. Two tribes went in one direction, but 10, the 12, 10 tribes went in the other direction. But in spite of them being scattered, God still loved them all. And the word scattered in the Greek is diaspora. Dios is a preposition. It means the soul. Spora is a noun. It means through. He said, listen, I want you to know that I'm sowing through. And as quiet as it is kept, God is still in the sowing business. You see, you come to Salem and get saved and get indoctrinated into the word of God. And sometimes you move to other areas. Sometimes you go to California, sometimes to New York, sometimes to Atlanta or uh, Orlando. You go to different places, but because you have been indoctrinated into the Word of God, you're carrying the gospel wherever you go. In other words, you have been scattered for the betterment of the kingdom. That's why when you come and get filled with the word and indoctrinated in the gospel, when you go to other places, don't hide in the crowd if though you don't have the word. You must take what you have, use it at your workforce. You need to let people know on your job that I know who Jesus is. You need to let people know at your house, I know who Jesus is. You need to let people know in the street, I know who Jesus is. I may not look like much, but I have been indoctrinated into the real word of God. Talk to me, somebody. It's no accident that you have camped here at Salem now. Talk to me, somebody. Because God wants to fill you with the unsuchable richness of just 
the word the word is universal it is appeal reasonable it is teaching reliable it is promise doable in its conflict far reaching in its vision accurate in its prophecy simple in its application new and modern in its statesmanship but you have to read it to be wise you have to believe it to be saved you have to practice it to be holy it is a pilgrim staff a pilot's compass a christian's chariot it is a soldier's sword preach reverend it, it's a, it's in the 12 tribes which are scattered scattered and then he says greetings greeting keros is the greek word for greetings the word greetings keros mean to rejoice in other words he said in spite of being scattered in spite of being away from your home in spite of being away from your family in spite of things looking difficult to you now in spite of what you heard from your doctor in spite of what your job boss said to you in spite of what your loved ones has said about you in spite of all the difficulties that you're going to he said you need an adjustment attitude he said rejoice in other words the word rejoice greetings mean kick your heel up <laughs> you know what don't walk around with a hung down head don't walk around if though you 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 have to frown all the time he said you need to know that whatever happened to you god either wills it or he allows it and you need to also know that he is still in control i've said it over and over and over again that there when people pass sometime we get all been out of shape why did my mother die why did my father die why, why did my sister brother die why did i lose my husband my wife but revelation 118 jesus said i'm he that liveth i was dead but behold i am alive forevermore and then he said amen and then he come right back before we end the verse i have the key of death in my hand here's what it means that the reason you are still here and your friend is gone because the Lord didn't turn the key on you ought to have some help here it ain't because you've been so holy it's not because you're doing everything right it's not because you're walking the way of the Lord It's because the Lord didn't turn the key it also means you can't die until he turns the key <laughs> I have two witnesses in this house that's why you here this morning is because the Lord didn't turn the key on you you can be as healthy as a bull but if the Lord turned the key you gone and you can be sick enough until look like your last breath is your last breath but if the Lord don't turn the key you will get up and kick over backwards and walk down the aisles I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus that's why I get up every morning and say Lord thank you for not turning the key on me last night then he said watch you use this personal pronoun my my brethren we gotta understand that this is a huge family I hear people say I'm in Memphis by myself I don't have any family that ain't quite right if you're born again you're sitting next to family members mm -hmm. you see if you're not careful your Christian family will be much closer to you than your biological family because sometimes biological folk like to use you they like to ride in on what you got <laughs> and if you ain't got nothing they ain't gonna show up not everybody but some of them I wish I had some help but 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 your Christian family 
if they know that you are in need somebody is gonna be there it may not be the one you look for but somebody is gonna be right there and they will come and want nothing in return everybody to help you don't want you to help them back they they want to just be a blessing to you because of the stuff that's on the inside and when you got the right stuff on the inside you enjoy blessing your sister you enjoy blessing your brother and if you're running somebody that don't bless you don't fall out with them God didn't want them to do it God got somebody right around the corner I know I'm supposed to say right but right around the corner that's waiting to bless your life You say, my brethren, Greek word for brethren is artifacts. It comes from the word meaning from the same womb. That means we are related by womb. Uh, you see, we have been born into this family. I've mentioned this several times, but there are five distinct births in the Bible. There's what you call the soil birth, the surgical birth, the sack birth, the Savior's birth, and the saint's birth. Genesis 2, 7, he formed man from the dust of the ground. That's the soil birth. And then after he made man, he put him to sleep and performed surgery. It is said that man had 14 ribs before woman came along. <laughs> and, and, and the Lord, when he made woman, he cut him and took one of his ribs and made <laughs> I, I, I won't go too far with that he, he made woman out of that rib a man once was in the hospital and he was uh, pretty sick and his wife was sitting next to him and he he raised up he said that that you Elizabeth so yeah, baby, it's me. Elizabeth, I was just thinking way back yonder when I was in Veterans Hospital sick, you were right there. So Elizabeth, you know, when the house burned down to the ground, you were right there. So Elizabeth, you know, when I lost my job and lost my car, you was right there. It's a little bit, you know, when I broke my leg, come think about it, you was right there. He tell you the truth, little bit. I ain't had nothing but bad luck. <laughs> Ever since I met you. <laughs> She is. She is that real that come from. That's the surgical birth. But whenever man impregnate a woman, she carry a baby in a sack. That's called sack birth. The Holy Spirit uh, leaped upon Mary and impregnated her, and she brought forth Jesus. That's the Savior's birth. And the Holy Spirit brought us from darkness to the marvelous light. Give us new inspiration, new aspirations. Start looking with new observations, counting with new calculations. That's the saint's birth. And when we're born again, we are knitted together through the spiritual birth. That's why it shouldn't be so much turmoil in the church of the living God. Because we're family. Talk to me if you can. We are, help me say we're family. Yes. Just take a moment and shake somebody's hand and say, you my sister, you my brother. Just say, you, you, uh, you, you may not know us, and we family, we family. We, we're family, we, we're, yeah, we're family, we're, we're family, we are, yeah, we're, we're, we're family. And when family know your family, family just stick together. You don't get in little huddles and talk down family members. 
come on talk to me you don't rejoice when a family member is down you don't rejoice when a family member is going through something because we are family when my family hurt i hurt when my family rejoice i rejoice because we are family don't make no difference with me about you being methodist or baptist or presbyterian or church of god in christ talk to me somebody you get to heaven you ain't, ain't no need to go in and talk about take me to the section where the baptists are or take me over there where the methodists are come on talk to me i want to go down the corner where the church of god in christ no 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 it's either saint or ain't and i'm in the saint family am i doing all right he said my brethren let me use this other word count see it in your bible okay am i in the greek but the word count it comes from this idea of a spreadsheet it's banking terminology you know in banking terminology they give you when you get ready to make a loan you have to present a spreadsheet on your spreadsheet you put your asset on one side you place your liabilities on the other layman talk you put your income on one side you put your expenditure on the other side sometime we do that as christians you know we sang a song that all of my good days outweigh my bad days so i won't complain now the only reason you can do that is said that is because you've been counting your good days and you've been counting your bad days james said don't do that because we will put our sunshiny days over here our rainy days over here our well days over here our sick days over here the days we have friends we put it over here the days we have enemies we put it over here days we got a little money we put it here days we're broke we put it over here. james said stop doing that he said attitude adjustment he said count it all joy now i know it's hard for us to do that but watch this count it joy when i got some money but over here count it joy when i'm broke well because over here i'm gonna learn how god can take nothing and make something out of it am i here by myself over here count it joy because i'm well but over here count it joy because i'm sick because it is here i'm gonna find out that god is a doctor that never lost a patient am i here by myself count it joy over here because the sun is shining but count it joy over here because it's raining because i'm going to discover that god can bless me in stormy weather y'all don't hit me in this you see if you had all sunshine and never rain you would end up with a desert if you had all rain and no sunshine you would end up with a flood but what god does to us he give us a little sunshine he give us a little rain and you end up with a beautiful garden <laughs> y'all ain't gonna hit me this time. can you imagine how life would be if it was good all the time and we got all these cliches we use oh child, how you doing oh bless the lord i'm blessed and highly favored <clears throat> get away from me with that you ain't having no every day no good day you're gonna have some bad days if my bible is right you're gonna have some bad day god ain't gonna let you have no every day no good day you get beside yourself it don't even make good sense to have it good all the time because don't you know you get beside yourself in everything if every time you ask god for something he gave it to you I'm looking at some folk now. You wish God had a said no to you someday. 
you saw that man oh lord please lord please give him to me lord lord i can't make it without him i want him lord please please lord give it to me lord so, all right you can have him three months later lord what was wrong with you to tell you now but you kept begging me you kept me i said no several times but you wouldn't stop it no so go on I'm going to be down your street in a moment. He said, count it. He helped me say, count it. Then he used the word all. That means everything that happened to you is part of the all. If you just read this verse, you ain't gonna be frowning no more. I see people sometimes early in the morning riding along beside them, mouth punched out, like they're mad at the world. I ask myself, what could have happened to make them that mad that early? And you got health and strength. And you ain't walking, you even in a car. And a pretty car at that. And you frowning. Dr. Clay Evans said, you see folk with a loaf of bread under their arms. Complaining. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, somebody. I mean, you ought to at least know that everything that happened to you, that God did, he did it for good. Count it. All oh, hip is all. But preacher, I get laid off last month. Count it all, Joe. Preacher, talk to me, somebody. The doctor said, don't look like I'm going to get wet. Count it all, Joe. Preacher, my husband left me with children to raise by myself. Count it. All joy. Talk to me. Reverend, my wife took everything I had. Counted. Uh, talk to me, somebody. All joy. Watch this. Counted all joy. Kira. Kairos. For joy. Kares and Kira are two sisters. Kira. It's the Greek word for grace. Kares is the Greek word for joy. They work hand in hand together. For me to have joy, I need to have already had experience with grace. You do know about grace, don't you? That we have been saved by grace through faith unto good work. I am saved. In other words, I am gripped with grace. And the book of Romans said that God give us a measure of grace. In other words, there are different measures of grace he give to different people at different times. Let me explain. You see, Dr. Evans just finished singing a little while ago and with that melodious voice God gave him singing grace. Moses just finished playing that instrument. And, and, and you can't do it. Ain't no need to get jealous of it because God has given him musical grace. <laughs> Talk to me somehow. And see, sometimes when a person is going through crisis, God has given them crisis grace. Y'all don't hear me here. So, 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 so that's why some people can endure more than others because God had given them a measure of grace for the moment. God know how much grace you need to help you make it through what you got to go through. That's why you have to, songwriter said, turn it over to Jesus. He will, uh, yeah, work it out. 
and because he has given us a marriage of grace he threw in some joy that's why I don't have to walk with my head down because I know who I am I know what I am and I know whom I'm serving and the God that I serve he want me to have joy he said listen even when I fill your cup I don't just put a measure in your cup he said I make your cup run over he said I don't just give you life he said when I give it to you I give you life more abundantly preach from Ray that's why the God I serve talk to me somebody he want me to have real joy now that's a difference between joy and happiness we get them mixed up we say I just ain't happy well happiness is based upon what's happening yeah joy is based upon Jesus happiness is external but joy is internal happiness is temporal but joy is eternal y'all ain't here in other words you see what's happening depend happiness depend on what's happening for the moment that's why people come to church and leave say I ain't happy is because you looking at the external but when you have joy on the inside I ought to have some happiness I heard Paul say you know I can be locked in prison and they can put me in the inner dungeon and I can still have church he said because what I do is I just think myself happy <laughs> am I here by myself anybody here ever just start thinking and when you start thinking you started thinking talk to me somebody and before you knew it you were shouting all by yourself stop looking at the negative and start looking at the positive and start yeah y'all ain't gonna help me here start looking at how good God has already been to you and y'all don't hear me that when you start looking at his goodness you can't help but to have real joy Do I have a witness? Sometimes some people are not tough enough. Some folk react to the same problem different ways. Put three containers on the podium. Fill all three with hot water. Put an egg in one put some vegetables in the other and put coffee in the other and all three will react different hot water will make the egg hard hot water will make the vegetables soft but hot water will send flavor from the coffee Sometimes when some folk go through stuff, they get hard. I'll be all right here. In other words, they get mean and hateful and low down because of what they're going through. But some folk in hot water, they get soft. Get why they can't stand nothing. But you can put other folk in hot water and they'll come up with a flavor. And they will flavor the whole room. It's really an attitude adjustment. Y'all hear me, don't you? Because uh, it's the way you look at situations. Don't look at it as though God is fighting you. Look at it as God is bringing the best out of you. And you've heard me say this before. That God look for folk that he can trust with trouble. <laughs> Oh, I know I'm saying, sir. He looked for folk he can trust with trouble. You see, if some folk had to go through the stuff I have to go through, you know, get 
hate letters and nasty remarks on the internet that fools talking about me on the radio and telling me some folk would commit suicide yeah yeah you solve <laughs> talk to me some folk go through it they get a gun and try to take out revenge but when you got the right stuff in you talk to me somebody you keep on flaming the room and say I counted Lord hold me a moment all the joy talk to me somebody because listen at this a person can't talk about you without thinking about you and if they're thinking about you evidently you're doing something to, that they would love to do because if you wasn't they were gone about their business I wish I had some help in this count it y'all hear me don't you all the joy when you fall the Greek word is periopipto perio yeah mean to, to fall uh, pipto mean around here's what it really mean it's like a person uh, walking uh, and get caught up in quicksand in other words uh, you are surrounded uh, with stuff that's trying to hold you down y'all don't hear me it, it means that, that you can't back up you cannot go forward you can't go to your left you can't go to your right he said listen you need to count it joy when you get in predicaments that you can't get yourself out of I ought to have a witness in this house it looks strange to me because we're so used to handling stuff our own way the Lord said you don't understand that I'm waiting to be your deliverer you ain't gonna help me I'm waiting to get you out of stuff you could not get yourself out of he said count it help me say count it count it all joy just shake a hand one more time that so a count it joy baby count it joy. so I don't know what you're dealing with but count it count it count it count it count 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 it count it all joy and then watch what it said when you fall in the divers put chillo the Greek for the word divers meaning that your temptation come in different colors they always come looking the same way if your temptation came looking the same way you could set up for it but sometimes your temptation come in the form of suffering yeah anybody here ever had to do a little suffering it come in the form of suffering sometimes you have to suffer because of false friends sometimes you have to suffer because of lack of employment sometimes you have to suffer because of the lack of knowledge in certain areas sometimes your temptation come in the form of suffering but sometimes it come in the form of sacrifice talk to me somebody you see every now and then you have to make a sacrifice and sacrifices they're not easy you got to give up some stuff you want to keep for yourself you got to give up some things you really love you got to give up some things that make you happy it come in the form of sacrifice sometimes it come in the form of sorrow you got to weep at the grave of somebody talk to me somebody but you got to watch your attitude when you get to the grave don't be asking God why my mama no don't do that just tell him thank you 
for letting them stay with me as long as they were with me because my God will never make a mistake he's always I'm trying to quit here don't have a witness here it come in different let me say different colors different shapes different fashion my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diamonds use this other word Tim Temptations, uh, shout temptation one time. Help me say temptation, perosmos, uh, Greek word for temptation. Don't mean much to y'all. It mean a lot to me. Temptation mean that my God is getting ready to send us to a test. You see, testing is important. You don't really know what stuff is if it had not gone through a test. When a goldsmith go dig up his gold, he take it and place it in the pot. He then put fire under the pot and he stand and wait for the fire to burn all the, yeah, the bacterias off of the gold. And every once in a while, he would walk over and look in the pot. If he cannot see the reflection of his face, he put more fire under the pot. He come back and look. If he cannot see his face, he put a little more fire under the pot. He look again. He can see it, but his face is not clear. He put a little more fire under the pot. And when he can look down at the gold and see his face and it's clear he know then the gold is pure talk to me somebody every now and then Jesus shows up and he look at you and see if he can see his reflection in your life and when he can't see it he turn the fire up am I here by myself when he cannot see his face in your life he turned the fire up a little more and when he can't see his reflection of himself in your life he'll turn preach from Ray the fire up a little more